Okay, so now that we've got our database populated with our schema using migrations, we're now ready to start defining our schema to Lucid using models. Once we define our schema to Lucid, we'll be all set to start persisting and querying data from our database. So first and foremost, what are models? Models are what we use to define our schema via TypeScript to Lucid. So in most cases, we're gonna have a model for each table within our database. Then within each model, we'll describe the columns to Lucid using TypeScript. In addition to just defining the table's columns via TypeScript within our models, we can also define computed properties, save hooks, query scopes, serialization behavior, and we're gonna dig into all of these later on. And the reason behind all of this is because Adonis tends to follow the active record pattern. So if you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, you'll be kind of familiar with what's going on here. So in addition to computed properties, save hooks, query scopes, serialization behavior, we can also define our model's relationships. So we'll be able to define relationships similar to how we're gonna define columns, and we'll be able to note whether that relationship is a one-to-one, -one, one-to-many, many-to-one, or many-to-many -many relationship. Thanks to this, the most cases we're going to be able to skip creating models for intermediary tables altogether since they'll be able to be described via the related model relationship definition. And again, thanks to this active record pattern, we're going to be able to kind of cut the database out and just directly work with our models whenever we're querying or persisting data within our database. So Adonis has a good example here up on their documentation. So a typical query without the active record models would kind of look like this, right? You'll, you'll query from your database, selecting from your table users, and you're going to select all columns and then you'll get back your users for within here. Using models, what we can do is we can query directly off of the model itself. So here user.all will return all users within our users table. And then up here, they additionally have an example of how you can go about defining how a particular column within your model will be serialized to JSON. So there's a lot to cover here. Before we actually dive in and create our first model, I'd like to take a brief second just to cover what an actual model kind of looks like. So this is a users table model that I have for a side project that I'm working on outside of Jaeger. So first thing to note here is that I have all of my tables columns defined via this at column decorator. My ID passes in an option to the column decorator telling it that this is the primary key. My password is being serialized as null so it never reaches the front end. My nullable fields are nullable within TypeScript's definition so that's noted by the question mark at the end of the property name. I'm noting to Lucid that my created at and updated at columns are date times. This is using Luxon's date time definition and I'm also noting it off of the column decorator that it is a date time that needs to auto create anytime that the record is saved. And then for the updated at, it should auto update anytime that the record is altered. I have a computed property that's noted by the computed decorator. You can leave this off if you do not want the computed property to be serialized to JSON. However, in this case, if I were to pass this model to JSON, I would want my avatar to be included. So that's how you can go about computed properties. Uh, relationships, here's a quick example of a many to many relationship. Uh, so in this case, I'm defining that it's many to many via a many to many decorator. I'm passing in the model type that it's related to, as well as some options here describing what pivot table to use, in addition to the pivot columns I want to be included with this relationship. And then here's an example of a before save hook. We have a couple of different hooks available to us. Before save will run both whenever we create a record or update a record. So if we update our user or create a new user, if the password is dirty, which means it's changed, we're going to rehash that password before we save it into the database, making sure that it's nice and secure. So this might seem like a lot before we even dive into creating our own model, but I wanted to kind of give you a reference point of what the model itself is going to look like before we dive in ourselves. So now that we have this out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in and create our first model ourselves. So make sure that you're in your terminal in your projects directory. Let's run node ace make model user. Okay, so our user model is now successfully created at app models user.ts. So let's go ahead and dive into that file. Okay, great. So this is what a new model will look like whenever you create one yourself. I do want to note that we are skipping over authentication. Typically within an application flow, I would add authentication to my project before I add in any of my other migrations or models. Since we're skipping that and jumping into the models and migrations ourselves, I want to note that typically the authentication step will take care of creating our user model for us as well as our user's migration. But I felt it necessary that we learn these things individually before we dive into something like authentication. So now if we compare this user model to the one that I showed earlier right here, basically what you would expect if you were to create the user model via the authentication step, you would get this before save hook automatically for you since it would know that your user is going to have a password since it's dealing with authentication for you. The password would be defined, it would be serialized as null for you. You, I believe, would have an email and an ID and of course the created at and updated at columns 
which we should already have. Yeah. So it'll take care of a couple of the housekeeping steps for you since it knows your user is going to deal with authentication. Uh, we know this ahead of time that we're going to be dealing with authentication later. So we're going to go ahead and learn how to put that stuff in ourselves. So just wanted to note in a typical application flow, Adonis will take care of some of this stuff for you. Okay. So now for our user model itself, we're starting off with an ID, which is a column, which is noted as our primary key, which is true. So we can keep that. And then our created and updated at columns are also true for our models case. So we have both of these, both of these, we want to be date times. We want them to auto create on save and we want our updated at to auto update on update. One of the nice things that this date time notation on our column decorator will do is anytime that we grab a record from our users table, our created at and updated at are going to be mutated into Luxon date objects. So these won't just be strings straight out of the database. These will already be date objects for us. Okay, so next up, we need to define the rest of our users' properties. So beyond our ID, we're also going to have a username. So let's note that we have a column here. It's going to be public and it's going to be called username, which is of type string. We're gonna have another column here, which is public, which is our email of type string. We're going to have our password. So public password of type string. And we're gonna have a remember me token. So public remember me token, which is optional, which is also of type string. Again, since our remember me token is nullable within our database, we wanna reflect that within our model by making its property optional using the question mark after the property name. And then what that will do for us is anytime that we use a user record later on, it will remind us via TypeScript that this field may not exist. So it will do some nice type awareness for us there. Okay, so these should be all of the user's fields defined directly on our user's table. So we have that out of the way. Now what we need to do is go about securing our password. And as we saw earlier, we can do that via a serialize option in our column decorator via an options object. So let's add an object to our column decorator and let's add in the property serialize as and define that as null. So anytime we pass this on to our front end, it's going to be serialized as null. So we will not have the password available to our front end. Okay, and then next up, we need to hash our password anytime that we're updating it within our database. So let's go ahead and do at before and let's stop here for a second. These are some of the hooks that we have available to us. So we have before create, before delete, before fetch, find, paginate, save, and update. You can define all of these here on your model as you need them. Uh, we're gonna be using before save. However, before create will run just whenever you're creating a record, delete, just whenever you're deleting a record, fetch whenever you're querying multiple records, find whenever you're querying a single record, paginate whenever you're paginating a number of records, uh, save before you're saving a new record or updating an existing record, and then update before you're updating an actual record that already exists. So for our use case here, we wanna use before save so that, so that this runs anytime that we're saving a new or updating an existing record. So let's define that there. This is going to be public, static, async, and we'll stick with Adonis's uh, default naming here by naming it hash password. This is passed in an instance of our user itself. So we can type that with the model itself. Next up, we need to check if our user property is dirty before we're saving it so that we're not hashing an already hashed password. So if our user dollar sign dirty password, if our user's password is dirty, user dot password will equal await. And then we need to import a module here called hash yeah, it's not going to allow auto importing. So let's import hash from at IOC Adonis core hash. And then we should have a hash dot make available to us. And we just pass in our mutated password to that. And then we'll get back a hashed password for that. So we should be good to go ahead and save this. That should do it for right now for our user's model. We're gonna get into relationships in the next lesson. For the remainder of this lesson, what I wanna do is kind of go over the same flow for the remainder of our models. So we're gonna have just two more models here. We're gonna have a tasks and projects model. Our two intermediary tables will be represented via the user's tasks and projects tables. And now, since we already had a user's controller made, I didn't get to show you kind of a neat trick that Adonis offers us via the ACLI whenever we're creating a new model. So what we can do here is if we do node ace make model hyphen h to show the options for this, we can pass in two different flags. We can pass in an M and this will make a migration 
in addition to this model's creation. So we can create a model, a migration, and then we also have an option to create a controller at the same time that we're creating a model as well. So if you're creating something at the start of a project and you know you're gonna need a controller, you're probably definitely gonna need a migration if you have a model for it. Um, you can pass in node ace make model tasks dash MC. So you can see what it did is it created a migration for this model. It created a tasks controller for this model and it created the model itself as well. But that's really not it. If we take a look at that tasks controller and compare it to our users controller here, you'll see it kind of starts us off with the resource itself. Whereas with the users controller, we had to define all of that ourselves. So the reason for that is Adonis is able to pick up the way that we're creating this is it's likely going to be a resource because we have a model and a migration for it. Whereas if we're just creating a controller on its own, Adonis really has no context around what we're using that controller for. It could just be for a single method. So this is really a great approach if you're starting a project from scratch and you need to create both a controller and a migration for a particular model. So this is really handy to keep in mind um, moving forward. So we already have our tasks migration defined, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. But we can go ahead and do the same thing for our projects. So node ace make model projects and we just want a controller for this so we'll just do hyphen C and you'll see instead of creating a migration since we left off the hyphen M it's just creating our controller via the hyphen C and again it started us off with a resource controller here as well okay so let's go ahead and finish up our tasks and projects model so we'll start with projects here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the migration over to the right so that I can see what properties are on this model and we're just going to define it away so at column public name which is a string it's not nullable, so we don't need a question mark. At column public description, this one's nullable, so we'll put a question mark there. Whoops, not a type null, type string. We have an integer, which is unsigned for our status ID, so at column public. And actually here we could define out our enum and make it of type enum here. Um, we'll do that here in a second. So public status ID. And that is, we'll just make that a number for right now. We'll come back here and adjust that here in a second. And then we have our timestamps. So something nice Adonis will do here is whenever we grab a record or a number of records from this table, if it notices a snake cased column, what it will do is it will alter the column name into camel cased so that it's a little bit more user or developer friendly. So just keep that in mind whenever you're correlating your migrations to models. If you see a snake case, the default for Adonis is to camel case it. Um, you can alter this, of course. So you have the ability to define the column name so, you know, if I wanted to keep the snake case, I could do status ID here, and then this would be whatever I want it to be, right? I could, I could make this just status if I wanted to. The binding is being defined manually. So we'll keep it the default here because I tend to kind of like that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and wrap up our tasks real quick, and then we'll go ahead and create a status enum and plop that in for our status ID columns. So uh, we could actually copy some of our project's definitions here. So we'll just copy these three plop that in here. In addition to our description, we have a timestamp. Oops. So at column, and since it's a timestamp, uh, we can define this as a date time. Uh, we don't want it to auto create or auto update. We want this to be user defined. So we'll leave both of those off. This will be public do at, again, camel casing the snake case field. It's nullable. So we need to make it optional and it will be of type date time. And then we have two relationships here created by and assigned to. So like I said, we're gonna get into relationships later on. However, we do need to define these columns themselves within our model so that we have access to the actual created by and assigned to IDs and not just the related model instance itself. So what we'll do is underneath my ID here, we'll do at column public created by, this will be a number and I believe we made this nullable. Yes, it's nullable. So let's tack a question mark on that. And then at column public assigned to, it's nullable as well, and that will also be a number. So now on our tasks, and since we're gonna have access to the created by and assigned to IDs, and then later on, we'll also define the kind of virtual representation of that relationship. Okay, and then to wrap up this lesson here, let's go ahead and define our status ID enums. Um, so I don't really wanna get into what contracts are quite yet, but within our contracts table, let's create a new folder and let's call this enums. And then let's create a new file and let's call this status.ts. And then we'll want to just define an enum, call it status. And then we're gonna have an idle state, which will be our one. We'll have an in 
progress, which we'll have as two, and then we'll have complete as three. And then let's just export this out. So export default status, give that a save. And now within our tasks and projects models, we can swap out our status ID for this status enum. So we can do status and hit tab on that to auto import, give that a save. And then for our project, we can do the same thing status, give that a save. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to define the status ID as either one, two or three and nothing else. And then whenever it comes time to validate our requests, this will come in handy as well because we'll just gonna, we're gonna be able to pass in the status enum to make sure that it is one of the defined statuses that we support. Okay, so this might've been a lot to take in here. I wanna go ahead and break here. And then in the next lesson, what we're gonna do is expand upon our knowledge of models by defining our relationships. So we'll cover when to use what type of relationship, whether to use a one-to-one, one-to-many, a many-to-one, or a many-to-many -many relationship, how to go about defining those, in addition to what some of the options are for those themselves.